Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of Survival Mike's channel. Today we take a look at some classic but very good Victorinox Swiss Army knives. But I don't want to talk with you about the different features and the different tools that are on the knives. I want to talk with you about how to get them clean, how to get them sharp, how to maintain them so that these knives here are really going to be a companion for life. So guys, let's talk about cleaning and maintaining your Victorinox or Swiss Army knife. And there are some features and areas on the blades that are critical for dirt and lint, especially when you wear it in your pocket. Some areas are, for example, at the back side this holes, where the springs interact with the steel on the other side. These gaps between the layers, but especially on this and this end, where the tools are locking in by a slip joint. And I try to zoom in very, very fast for you. As you can see, those are the layers of the blade. So it's a three layered blade. And those three layers are, for me personally, the best size. And in this model, I have found all the features and tools that I need in a Swiss Army knife. But that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you <coughs> that it's better. <coughs> it's better on this side. So there are the tools and they come in all the way up to here and if you turn it around you can see the spring here and here, where the knife is closing in and it's held by friction, by slip joint. And this gap that you can see right there, this part here. is really easy, full of dirt and lint. And this is important to know because if there is dirt and lint, the knife won't close as well as it should be. But there is one trick that I want to show you. <coughs> Sorry. So let's zoom out a bit. There is one really good trick. The trick is to take your toothpick and I tell you what, I would never ever put this guy in my mouth. Never. It's not clean, it's not good, it's not healthy. Take your blade, carve a little pick from the wood, from a small little twig, whatever, and use the wooden one. But this guy here is not useless. It is great for cleaning out these areas. The small holes in the back get all rid of all this lint and dirt and everything. Part here, here, between the layers where the knife blade is locking in, uh, you can clean it really, really good with this toothpick. So. Therefore, this guy is awesome, really, really good. When it comes to cleaning, you should open the knife all the way. It's very important because you don't want to clean just the small areas behind. You want to give it a good maintain and a good service. 
so that this blade will last you for quite a long time. So let's try something else. I try to let's zoom in there. Whoops, there we go. Better. You can see it in there? All this lint, dirt, dust, everything. And you don't have to put all this out with the toothpick. You can easily wash it and clean it. What you want to have is some warm water. Not the coldest, but warm. There we go. In case of cleaning it outdoors, cold water is also good, but if you do a maintain at home, try to get warm water. This is really get the cleaning much easier. So when you have opened all the tools, also on the back side, open it up. There is dust and dirt as well in there. So then you go for giving it the first water run over the tools, inside, over the blade and so on. This will loosen up the dust. Then you can take soap or uh, for example, this one is for uh, cleaning different kind of surfaces, you know, cleaning the kitchen, cleaning glass, whatever. And this cleaner is also good. So get it in there, as you can see, also on the back side. And be careful not to cut yourself. Both blades are open and you handle this knife. All this from the back side, so that you don't cut yourself. But be careful about this. And then rub it, rub the tools with your fingers, just with your fingers. The saw, the knife very carefully, screwdriver inside, let it sit a while. Also on the other side. After this, simply wash it again. From all the sides, inside, let the toothpick out, the tweezers. And give it a good clean. After you have washed the knife, it's half the way. Next step to get it back to a really good tool is to sharpen each single tool that has a sharp edge on it by hand. And this is not as complicated as it sounds. I use my Spyderco Sharp Maker. And I only use the ceramic, the white triangle shaped ceramic rod. It's a very fine coarse ceramic rod, but this easily do the job. Let's start out with the blade. You have the bigger blade. A little wet right now. And Victorinox or Swiss Army knives are normally have 15 degrees, I think, per side. So 30 degree angled blade. 
lay flat, tilt it until the angle is reached and give it some light passes. And I do this just a few times. You can hear the ceramic rod working. Very lightly, not much pressure at all. And you can feel if the knife is... Oh yeah getting to the edge that you want. So that's the main blade. Next thing is the small little blade. There's some residue left. I need to rub away with the paper towel here. So perfect. Shiny again. <laughs> Next step is to do the same thing with the small blade. Just a tip from me. Take the small blade and tilt it not as much as the main blade. Because the small blade is always the sharp guy. Some other sharp blades on the knife are, for example, the all the Rima. Let's try this guy up. Is it still wet from the washing progress? And there is an edge on this side, right there. Hollow grind on this side. there is an angle. And now I'm using the rod, the ceramic rod, and simple run over this edge. Again, finding the right angle where it sits perfect and just slightly run over it. So now it's touched up and Oh yeah, you can feel it. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Man, this guy's sharp now. Another tool that should be sharp. It's not a must. But should be. It's the can opener. And on the can opener, there is, on the front part here, the curved part, is normally sharpened. And again, I take my ceramic rod. Best would be the the edge of the ceramic rod. And go a few passes from this side, a few passes from the other side, just to bring back the edge. This is not a tool that you use very frequently. At least I don't. But it should be sharp. Because when you want to use it, you don't want to fail by opening the can because this is a dull edge. And it's done very quickly. Good. Feels much better. Saw blade. Yes, the saw blade. Another blade that should be sharp. And it looks a bit tricky to sharpen this guy, but it's not. Not with this rod. I think you can get this rod separate on the internet. You don't have to buy the whole sharp maker system because you could get replacement sticks like this one. Just google it, you will find a store which is having them in stock. 
And this edge again comes in very handy when you want to sharpen up your saw blade. And the first thing is to look at the saw teeth. How are they set? It? There is a crossing type of setting of the teeth itself. And you just slightly go in there with the edge of the ceramic rod and give it one pass and the other side. So tooth by tooth you simply bring back the edge. And you can see the crossing motion that I'm doing. This side, this side, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Very slightly, just with the weight of the ceramic rod, you can sharpen up this guy. If you do have anything that is nearly the same like this rod, you can use it. Well, you don't have to buy this this special one, but oh yeah, when you now touch the saw, you can feel the tips are back up in the position. Uh, they're not rolled over again and the edges, oh my god, this is a sharp guy. Yeah, baby. This is how I want it. And that's all the sharp tools on this blade. There's nothing more. But there is more to do than just cleaning and sharpening the knife. It is very important after you have washed it with soap or any cleaning fluid that you have at hand is to oil it. Because now every oil is gone. That's the way cleaning liquids are working. And there are not that much places where you have put oil. Don't want to get oil all over the place. But you want to get oil on moving parts. So at first put one single drop of oil in the first hole, one single drop of oil in another hole on the back where the spring is working so that there is no friction that you don't want. Let it sit for a while. Um, he one drop here, one drop here. So I want to show you. Come on, focus. Just a bit of oil. Right there, at the top. One, two. Just a bit of it in the two holes. And now, on the other side between the layers. That's why you want to place a small little drop of oil. And you can use any oil that you have at hand. Uh, good would be any oil that is not building resin or getting rancid. For example, for sewing machines there are quite good oils, tiny little bottles. Um, this is from Boker Knife Care Oil that I have for quite a while now and it's still good. Any machine oil, whatever, doesn't matter. You can also use some vegetable oil, for example olive oil or whatever you have. When you have placed the oil on all the spots, so drop every between the layers, drop on this side, on the other side and on the holes on the back. The next step is to oh, I think I like this under this blade. The next step is to open and close the tools a few times just to get the oil in there. You can work it in a bit. Yeah, that's it. The only problem 
I still have is this loosened uh, handle. And there is one easy way to get rid of the handle to replace it. This would be getting out either the toothpick or the tweezers. For me the tweezer side is good, ah, no, the toothpick side is good and the tweezer side is bad, so the, the side with the cross on it is not good. And then you have a hole there and all you're gonna do is put a small little screwdriver in there and pop this scale off. You then can put a bit of glue, super glue or whatever, epoxy, on the handle scale, put it back on. So you can use one of those hex screwdrivers, small tiny little ones, if they fit inside. Oh, this is perfect. Go as far in as possible. So take this one, put it where the tweezers or the toothpick normally would be. Go in as far as you can and pop off. the handle. There you go. And when I glue things like this, uh, it's easy done by putting a bit of this glue where the rivets are sitting. Don't get it in there where the toothpick or the tweezer are because then you have no chance to get them back in. So and the only spots where I put some super glue is there, there and there. Three spots and where the red cross is or the silver cross, the logo is sitting. There are some. That's all. Don't need to put that much on it. Now, take a blade, take the right side to the right, up and down and all this stuff, and then simply put it on back again. Pop it on and hold it for a few seconds, press it together. Yeah, you can clamp it down as well, then you don't have to hold it in your hand. But that is the last thing to do when it comes to maintenance, service and repair a Swiss Army knife. That's all. And now you could be sure the knife is in good shape, every edge is sharp, everything is cleaned uh, and it's working. The next time you'll need it. The next time you need a companion for life. Thanks for watching. See you next time.